drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello everyone and thank you for watching edupedia world videos in this session we shall try to understand differences in the different branches of accounting which we have already discussed in the previous session also we have different bases of accounting and limitations of the subject of accounting in this session firstly we will take up differences in branches of accounting if we talk of the differences between different branches of accounting it is appropriate to distinguish only between financial accounting and management accounting and financial accounting and cost accounting as you can see on the screen the table that shows the differences between the two subjects that's financial accounting and management accounting with the points of differences the first point of difference or distinction is objective in case of financial accounting the objective is it records financial transactions to work out profit or loss and to know the financial position of the business concern but the objective of management accounting is providing information to management for formulating policies and plans the second point of distinction is the nature in case of financial accounting it records only those transactions which have already taken place while as management accounting is concerned with using historical data to make projections or taking future managerial decisions in a more simpler way financial accounting records the transactions that have already taken place in a particular financial year while as management accounting uses that information uses that data which the financial accounting has already recorded and redesigns reorients reshapes remaps the same information in such a way so as to facilitate the projection for taking future managerial decisions the next point of distinction between the two subjects is legal requirement under section 209 210 and 211 of the companies act every company registered under companies shall prepare and present its financial statements at the end of every financial year while in case of management accounting it's not compulsory it's only a service function and is helpful in administration of business so in case of financial accounting they are legally bound it's compulsory for them to prepare at the end of every financial year financial statements under different sections of the act but for management accounting there is no such compulsion the next point of difference is reporting in case of financial accounting financial reports which are prepared under the provisions of the companies act 2013 they are meant for both internal and external use or they are meant for both internal users as well as external users as we have discussed in one of the previous sessions to make various important decision and they have a legal requirement to do so first they have a legal requirement to prepare financial statement as per the provisions of the companies act the second legal requirement is to present and publish it for both internal as well as external users while as the reports prepared in case of management accounting are meant for only internal use for the management to take decisions concerning the organization but based on the reports prepared under financial accounting which means it prepares its reports management accounting prepares its reports on the base of the information and data that it takes from the financial accounting next point of distinction between the two is the description that's financial accounting records only monetary transactions the transactions which are expressible and expressed which can be expressed in terms of money only it records only those transactions but management accounting records both monetary and non monetary transactions it records also non monetary aspects of the organization another point of distinction is accounting principles in case of financial accounting while we prepare financial statements in financial accounting we have to follow certain principles we have to follow certain conventions which we generally and technically and typically refer as generally accepted accounting principles but while we prepare reports under management accounting there is no such legal requirement so the main difference between financial accounting and management accounting another main difference is in case of financial accounting we have to follow certain principles and procedures while preparing financial statements but when we prepare certain reports 
based on the information of the financial accounting we are under no legal obligation and binding to use certain principles and conventions finally the time period as mentioned earlier we prepare financial statements for a particular period that's annually as required by companies act 2013 but in case of management accounting we prepare internal reports from time to time to help management to keep track of the happenings in the organization also in case of financial reports prepared under financial accounting they are compulsorily to be audited and only then they can be presented at the annual general meeting of the firm and subsequently published but we do not need and require to audit reports prepared under management accounting system so these were some of the major and important points of distinction and difference between two major branches of accounting that is financial accounting and management accounting now we'll try to understand the difference between financial accounting and cost accounting financial accounting as discussed earlier is primarily concerned with the record keeping which is directed towards the preparation and presentation of profit and loss account and balance sheet so it is a general way to help the management to manage the affairs of the concern but it fails to give the detailed report on the efficiency of various divisions so in nutshell cost accounting has a different and special focus in the modern day of cutthroat competition every business organization has to pay attention towards its cost of production computation of cost on scientific basis and thereafter cost control and cost re reduction has become of paramount importance nowadays so these were some of the few and important differences between cost accounting and financial accounting now we turn to another important topic that we have to discuss in this session is basis of accounting we also call them systems of accounting mainly we have three main branches of or three sorry we have three main bases of accounting or systems of accounting cash basis accrual basis and mixed basis cash basis or cash system of accounting now actual cash receipts under this system and actual cash payments are recorded that's no credit transactions are recorded at all until the cash is actually received or paid also it facilitates cash system of accounting facilitates the preparation of receipts and payments account it helps the firms to prepare receipts and payments account especially for those organizations which are non trading concerns or not for profit concerns for example charitable institutions educational institutions and for professional people like lawyers doctors chartered accountants etc finally it does not take into account the outstanding expenses and accrued incomes outstanding expenses are the expenses for which we have received the services but we are yet to pay for those expenses accrued incomes are the incomes which we have which have accrued to us but we are yet to receive them so it does not make record of these things thus it fails to give proper and fair view of firm's operational performance and financial position yet this basis of accounting is popular among the firms whose transactions are mostly in the form of cash another system or basis of accounting is the accrual basis in view of the deficiencies of the cash basis of accounting the accrual basis of accounting has been developed by the accountants this basis of accounting rests on the concept of realization and expiration realization is with regard to the incomes and expiration is with regard to the expenses that's in this system of accounting the income whether received or not 
but if earned or accrued during the current accounting period the part of total income of that period it forms the part of total income of that period similarly if the firm has taken the benefit of a particular service or has incurred an expense but is yet to be paid in that period during which it was incurred the expenses shall relate to the period in which they have been incurred and shall be recorded in the books of the accounts that is realization means if we have incomes that are accrued to us but we are yet to receive them we will still record those incomes in the books of accounts doesn't matter whether we have received them or not expiration with regard to expenses means that if we have incurred an expense for example if we take an example if we have an employee in an organization he has given service to us at the end of the year we or at the end of the month we have not still paid his salary so this expense will be treated as outstanding expense so it is yet to be paid we'll still record it in the books of accounts now considering these things that's realization and expiration of the incomes and the expenses it presents the fair and true view of the firm's financial position and operational efficiency in a more broader way we can expand this statement like this since the system is based on the complete record of the financial transactions that's every transaction that relates to the current financial year is recorded what we mean by complete record of financial transaction it discloses the current true and correct true and fair view of the financial position of the firm it shows the true amount of incomes it shows the true amount of expenses incurred during the current financial period and subsequently profit or loss which means it shows the true amount of profit earned it shows the true amount of loss suffered if any it is also termed as the mercantile system of accounting this is the system which every firm especially the companies are required to follow while maintaining the books of the accounts so based on the scientific character of the system of accounting under companies act it has been mandated for companies to prepare their books of accounts using the system of accounting and finally we have the third and the last system of account that's mixed basis this is a system of accounting in which both cash and accrual basis of accounting are followed but with certain exception here we record incomes of cash basis that's only actual cash receipts are recorded not the accrued incomes that's if the incomes have accrued to us which we are yet to receive we will not record them we will record them only if we have received them so no accrual in case of incomes is followed in the system of accounting in case of expenses they are recorded irrespective whether they have been paid or not but if incurred shall be recorded in the books of accounts thus this system of accounting is considered the most conservative form of accounting as it rec recognizes incomes only when actually received but does not apply same rule to expenses so it neither recommend it is neither recommended nor followed by any business organization now finally we have the limitations of the subject of accounting in this session this is the final part of this session generally there are various limitations that can be pointed out and attributed to the subject of accounting here we'll discuss four main and major limitations of the subject of account as you can see on the screen the first one the first limitation is it ignores qualitative elements second not free from bias third ignores price level changes and finally danger of window dressing first ignores qualitative elements since the subject of accounting is confined to the monetary aspect only the qualitative elements like quality and performance of management quality of labor force public relations are completely ignored to do away with this limitation 
we have separate branches of account we have separate branch of accounting called human resource accounting which takes care of such concerns which we have discussed in our earlier session on different branches of accounting second one not free from bias in many situations the accountants while recording things in the books of accounts has to make few choices out of various alternatives like it has to make a choice between um, between the method of depreciation whether it can choose to record the depreciation in the books of accounts using straight line method or the written down value method choice in the method of inventory valuation that's whether it can use lifo method or fifo method okay since subjectivity is inherent in personal judgment the financial statements are therefore not free from bias this is another limitation of the subject of account and the third one is that is accounting ignores price level changes since we know that financial statements are prepared on historical costs thus fixed assets shall be shown in the balance sheet at the cost at which they have been acquired minus the amount of depreciation that we will be recording them at the book value book value is the difference between the historical cost and the amount of depreciation but it fails to reflect the value which it can current realize currently realize in the market thus it ignores the change in the price levels or inflation thus the analysis of such financial statement will not yield strictly comparable and scientific results so in order to, so to overcome such problems we have a separate branch of accounting in place that's inflation accounting which we have also already discussed and deliberated upon in our previous finally the last limitation here is danger of window dressing so what do we mean by this when the management deliberately and consciously enters wrong figures to artificially inflate or deflate the figures of profits assets and liabilities the income statement fails to provide true and fair view of the result of the operation and balance sheet fails to provide true picture of the financial position of the concern for example we can have an example that if we take an example of a bank at the end of the year financial year if this bank has large amount of npas npas means non performing assets that's the firm that it has given loans to its customers are not doing well they have turned bad or they are not giving interests and installments on time we term those assets as non performing assets now it has large amount of non performing assets now when it prepares financial statements when it will show this non performing assets figure in the balance sheet it will give wrong picture wrong notion wrong signal to the public so what it does it simply asks the people those who owe the bank for time being you deposit some amount somehow you borrow from someone and for time being 2 3 days you deposit it in bank we'll treat it as that we have recovered loans or dues from our customers now what will happen the npa figure will drastically come down so we term this as this is deliberate they deliberately and consciously enter wrong figures what in order to artificially inflate the figures in order to artificially show the artificial amount of assets so here they deliberately show the wrong picture and ultimately this amounts to window dressing so we end our session here thank you for watching at the pdia world